All right, yeah. Hi everyone, I think we are back with our uh, last uh, session on the dev track and I have Rahul Krishna with me for this session. So a quick introduction about Rahul. So uh, he's an open source technology evangelist and he has been working with Zeus uh, for 18 plus years and he's a pre-sales architect. And he uh, also he's also working with Linux and open source technologies for around 22 plus uh, years altogether. And uh, he helps customers transform their landscape to cloud native infrastructure by leveraging the power of multi-cloud Kubernetes and also helps them implement uh, full cycle security for the containerized landscape. And yes, uh, what not, I think uh, he's a yes, avid cyclist uh, and is working on long distance cycling. I think that's really good to know Rahul. And he's targeting 10,000 kilometers uh, this year. So all the rest we are cycling. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, so about this, today's session, yeah. uh, so about this, today's uh, session. it's all going to be your foster secure uh, innovation with your Kubernetes platform. Your and I think we're excited to hear you, Rahul. Over to you. Over to you. Yeah, thank you uh, for the uh, nice introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, uh, hope you enjoy this session uh, going forward. So uh, I'll just get down to the point. Uh, in this session, uh, you will see how you can post to secure innovation with your Kubernetes platform by leveraging uh, open, secure, comprehensive, and interoperable solutions. Right. Uh, when we look at the uh, container landscape, uh, there are multiple areas that need to be taken into consideration. Uh, what privileges do the container instances run with? Is the Kubernetes runtime secure enough? Uh, vulnerabilities in the container images and how you remediate or handle them. Uh, how do you set up the right network policies to protect your applications? And not to forget the node operating system on which everything is running. So it's all about managing the risk across the landscape. And while doing so, uh, how do you make uh, it easy for uh, your developers or operators to implement the security in your environment? So uh, SUSE offers uh, uh, open, comprehensive, and secure interoperable solutions designed for any Kubernetes environment. Uh, New Vector is a leader in full lifecycle container security delivering uncompromising end-to-end -end security for modern container infrastructures. Uh, Rancher is a 100% open source uh, complete container management platform for Kubernetes, can manage any Kubernetes distribution running anywhere, uh, and it gives you all the tools to, uh, to, to do so. And then RK2 is a CNC certified uh, free Kubernetes distribution that focuses on security and uh, compliance. And all three are completely open source and uh, uh, SUSE support subscriptions are available for New Vector and Rancher, uh, while RK2 uh, comes as part of the Rancher subscription. But uh, point to remember, everything that I'm going to talk about is open source. Now, uh, there are various ways to implement security. And one of the challenges with security is, you know, the ever change, changing uh, security landscape, uh, newer and newer threats coming, trying to keep up with it. And at the same time, uh, you know, uh, uh, managing all the complexity that comes along. So the whole aim here is to uh, how do you uh, simplify uh, managing the security landscape? How do you make it easy for it, uh, uh, for your developers and operators? And how can we automate as much as possible? Right. So New Vector was acquired by SUSE uh, uh, last year in 2021. Uh, and at that time, it was a proprietary product. Uh, in last month, that is May 2022, we have completely open sourced it. So let's look at New Vector and how it provides full container security. Uh, security in the container world can largely be uh, segregated into uh, two paradigms, uh, supply chain security and runtime security. The supply chain security primarily covers vulnerability scanning, compliance scanning, uh, and admission controls. Many tools are pretty good in this space, and uh, New Vector is pretty much on par with them, if not better. Where New Vector really excels is in the runtime security space. Uh, runtime security comprises of uh, uh, not just uh, scanning uh, uh, the containers, but also scanning the uh, orchestrator as well as the host operating system. It also covers thread-based controls and zero-trust controls. 
Now, what exactly do we mean by thread-based controls and zero trust controls? Thread-based controls uh, always need a signature for matching, right? So they could be like your CVEs, uh, pattern matching for data loss prevention, uh, prevention, pattern matching for network attacks and web application firewalls and your admission control rules. But with thread-based controls, you're always dealing with what is known, right? How do you take care of scenarios where you don't even know about the attack, say a, a zero day attack um, or some new vulnerability that has suddenly come up? Uh, you would be able to impose thread-based controls only once you know about the vulnerability. So zero trust controls is, uh, is, is comes to your rescue. Uh, zero trust controls already have a signature for matching that is your own application behavior. What New Vector does is it can automatically learn all network process and file access behaviors of your application. It can automatically generate policies for those behaviors and it can protect against anything that is not your known behavior. And that is what we call zero trust control. You can even export this behavior as security as a code and you can incorporate it in your application or you can incorporate it in your other, uh, say, you can uh, export it from your uh, uh, QA landscape or test landscape and deploy it in your production. So what Su uh, Susan Evector allows you to do is one, have complete network visibility in your environments, uh, implement zero trust protections, uh, protect against any uh, anomalies in network process or file access, uh, pr uh, protect you against uh, data loss prevention, uh, very useful from a compliance perspective. And uh, yes, we do support air gapped environments and uh, can be easily be uh, can easily be deployed on any uh, Kubernetes distribution. Now let's look at uh, how do we implement uh, zero trust controls, right? Uh, and this is the most interesting piece about uh, new vector. So as you are aware, uh, inside a Kubernetes cluster, there is an explosion of uh, east-west traffic, right? Uh, because Kubernetes abstracts away the complexities of all of this container to container traffic, you lose the visibility of this traffic. Other products will tell you what is represented in a manifest file or in IP tables or use port labels or will even use kernel shims, uh, say ABPF, to filter out all the send and receive from the kernel level, trying to represent what is happening within the network. But none of these approaches are looking at the live network traffic. And they don't see if network connections are being made without their knowledge or permission. And while you may have an excellent perimeter security from your legacy environments, uh, that perimeter security cannot inspect or see into traffic within the Kubernetes cluster, right? So uh, New Vector offers you full visibility into both north-south as well as east-west uh, uh, traffic within your cluster. And uh, New Vector comes with its uh, patented deep inspection, uh, deep packet inspection technology that allows you to monitor not just layer three and layer four traffic, but also understand the layer, layer uh, seven protocols and processes that are running inside the container. Uh, New Vector can allow you to uh, block control traffic between containers uh, running inside a pod. Uh, New Vector can understand uh, more than 35 odd layer seven application protocols and more than uh, and can protect you against more than 23 different uh, network based attacks. And because the new vector is the only container security uh, platform using network traffic, traffic as its source of truth, all of the capabilities uh, that you see on the screen are uh, unique to new vector. So uh, you don't have to make any changes to your application. You don't have to put any agent. You don't have to put any sidecar. <laughs> you just deploy your application and new vector will automatically learn the behavior. Uh, based on that, new vector will automatically generate the policy, both for network process as well as file access. Same can be exported in the form of security as a code. And what this allows you to do is basically protect, uh, provide you zero day countermeasures. So if there are any zero day attacks uh, for which uh, there isn't even information available, you're still protected against them because of the way uh, new vector is implementing security. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, you can also do packet, uh, packet capture. So if there is any forensic analysis that needs to be done for any sort of traffic, uh, you can capture packet at the container level and analyze them. And a new vector also has uh, DLT, uh, data loss prevention capabilities. So if you have applications that are using sensitive data like uh, uh, credit card information, say social security numbers and Aadhaar card numbers in our context, um, uh, you can create uh, uh, pattern matching uh, rules and then uh, new vector can essentially ensure that none of that data goes out of your uh, cluster if, if it is not supposed to. Now, uh, the way new vector works is pretty simple. You know, it works in three modes. Uh, when you deploy new vector, um, everything in the cluster is automatically placed in a discover mode. Uh, the discover mode is used to learn the process and network behavior. Discover mode uh, is a transitionary state meant for a short duration during uh, setup. That means any new services will be learned even if other services are either in the monitor or protect mode. When you are ready to establish uh, the zero trust parameter, you can move to the monitor mode. Right? So here, uh, this is essentially what discover, discover mode is learning, identifying how the application is behaving. And when you have done that uh, for a duration, say maybe a few hours or a day or a couple of days, uh, you can uh, establish the zero trust parameter by switching to the monitor mode. Now, Monitor mode will use the established uh, rules that it learned during the discover phase. And it will, uh, uh, as well as the process behavior, and then it will start sending out alerts based off any anomalous behavior that it has detected. So any connection that it doesn't know about uh, from, its, uh, from the discover mode or any process access or file access, uh, it will allow it to happen, but it will start sending you uh, alerts. So you can use the monitor mode as a means to filter out new from the known. Uh, and at this step, you can also start creating manual allow or uh, alert tools uh, if you find something that wasn't detected in the discover mode. And then uh, the next uh, mode is the protect mode. Uh, it uh, takes monitor mode to the next level because now it starts applying the blocking rules to those things that are not learned or that have not been manually uh, entered as approved uh, rules or uh, processes, right? So uh, now the other beauty is in the latest release, what we have done is um, uh, you can even define uh, the rules for moving applications from discover mode to monitor uh, and then to protect. You can define durations um, and say, okay, any application that comes in or is gets deployed in the cluster, uh, runs in the discover mode for uh, a defined duration. And after that, it automatically is switched into monitor mode. And then again for a defined duration. And then you can also define that it automatically gets switched into the uh, protect mode. So that's another neat thing that uh, that is available in, uh, in new vector now. Right, so... Uh, yeah, that's uh, just uh, representing the, all the, uh, the the deny behavior. Now, uh, uh, new vector's architecture is also interesting because, as I said, uh, for implementing new vector, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't use any uh, injection, it doesn't use any agent or a sidecar. Uh, uh, it runs on your cluster, uh, and it runs on your cluster as uh, continuous. So here I'm just going to talk about the uh, uh, new vector architecture, how it is deployed in a Kubernetes cluster, and how this architecture benefits you. So new vector will deploy four containers, uh, and the first one is called the uh, controller. The controller uh, acts as the uh, central command of uh, new vector, uh, and it is the one that ham handles uh, all the API calls from all the uh, other components of new vector. And it is also the only one that is making API calls to the uh, Kubernetes API. Now, this is a huge uh, performance advantage for our users uh, over our competitors because uh, there are not hundreds or thousands of API calls being made to the Kubernetes API hurting performance. Right? Uh, the second component uh, that is part of new vector is called the scanner, uh, which is responsible for 
yeah, you guessed it, uh, scanning for vulnerabilities and compliance uh, with CI security benchmarks. Uh, the scanner is uh, uh, proprietarily built for speed and accuracy. Uh, speed in terms of, uh, you know, the CV database is uh, contained within the container. Uh, so there is no network overhead uh, while scanning. And the scanners can also scale horizontally uh, to scan a uh, larger number of pods and also to scan large registries. And accuracy basically comes from the fact that the CV database is updated every day uh, from 15 different uh, sources. The third container um, uh, is the uh, manager container, which essentially provides the, uh, the user interface for new vector. Now it's worth noting that uh, you see in new vector, uh, the new vector UI is also being delivered via API calls from the controller. Uh, so yes, this means that you can automate and integrate anything uh, into new vector via APIs. The manager also has a CLI tool that can also be used for uh, creating your own automation steps. And then finally, uh, the fourth component uh, and the most important one is what we call as the enforcer. Uh, the enforcer container uh, gets deployed as a daemon set. Uh, so it's running on all nodes in the container. And it is the one that inspects the network traffic and enforces security policies. Uh, you will notice that the enforcer is sitting pretty close to the virtual switch box on the cluster node. This is where uh, New Vector's patented uh, uh, ability to transparently inspect network traffic comes into play. Uh, it can collect processes from every container and it can enforce the policies. So as you can see, uh, four different uh, components that form New Vector, all of them running as container on your own uh, uh, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, uh, and this is the most efficient uh, position to inspect all network traffic, uh, validate the layer, layer 7 protocol, uh, block any attacks uh, before uh, connections are even made and before any processes can be executed. Uh, this efficiency translates into uh, a very high performance uh, and a high scalability, even in clusters approaching uh, thousands of nodes. In fact, uh, one of our vendors has actually done this scalability testing uh, where uh, New Vector was able to reach uh, 1,000 nodes in the cluster. Um, and um, most of the computation couldn't uh, scale beyond 200 or 250 uh, nodes in the cluster. Uh, New Vector is also easy to deploy, can be deployed in multiple ways uh, via uh, Helm or via kubectl. Um, you can also completely automate the installation uh, using config maps. And either the entire installation can be done in about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, it's just like deploying an application on a Kubernetes cluster. And um, for those who are using Rancher, it's even easier because now um, from within the Rancher interface, uh, you're able to deploy new vector and uh, you're able to access new vector from within the Rancher interface. So, uh, so uh, while we have looked at comprehensively securing the container landscape uh, within the cluster, let's look at some of the other ways of securing the Kubernetes infrastructure. So Kubernetes requires a comprehensive uh, PKI in order to coordinate certificate generation and signing uh, for these communications. Uh, RK, which is our uh, Kubernetes distribution, uh, includes all the automation tooling necessary to manage this process. The second aspect in terms of security is the authentication itself, right? Uh, people are the biggest security threat. Uh, so uh, do not use shared connection, uh, shared accounts. Uh, you can control access to your Kubernetes clusters based on identities in your own central identity management system. This way you can reduce the operational burden uh, of managing additional user databases and you can apply rule-based access policies to known identities. Uh, Rancher provides a very easy mechanism to integrate one of the many supported uh, authentication providers, uh, as, uh, as you can see on the screen. Uh, the same can be uh, then leveraged by all the um, uh, Rancher managed downstream clusters. Another as aspect where Rancher excels is in uh, providing a very granular uh, role based access control mechanism. Uh, which can be applied uh, at the global level, which means uh, across all clusters, uh, 
or at individual cluster level or at the project or namespace level. Uh, Rancher comes, uh, as you can see from the screenshot, Rancher comes with roles available out of the box and uh, you can also create custom roles. And then uh, Rancher also provides you two different uh, methods of interacting with the Kubernetes API in a downstream cluster. Uh, the first one is indirectly, that is uh, Rancher has its own inbuilt authentication proxy. And uh, this proxy validates uh, the user's identity before uh, connecting uh, the user with the downstream cluster. Uh, now there is another option of uh, accessing the downstream cluster directly. Uh, in this case, if the downstream cluster has the uh, authorized cluster endpoint enabled, uh, the client request uh, can be authenticated uh, by calling a webhook uh, set up by Rancher uh, during cluster provisioning. So the second method allows clients to connect to the downstream cluster directly without requiring direct access to Rancher. Uh, so even in case the uh, Rancher server becomes unavailable, you can still connect to the downstream cluster. And then uh, lastly, um, uh, Rancher offers uh, uh, three different Kubernetes distributions, each uh, uh, for a specific purpose. So we have RKE, uh, which runs on Docker. Uh, we have RKE2, which runs on container D, and a very lightweight Kubernetes distribution called K3S, which again runs on container D. Uh, RKE is uh, derived from uh, a distribution called RKE government, uh, which uh, essentially was developed to meet the user uh, US federal government requirements. Uh, RK2 is uh, Rancher's next generation Kubernetes distribution. Uh, it combines uh, the benefits of both RKE1 and K3S. For, from K3S, it inherits the usability, ease of operations, and uh, deployment model. From RKE1, it inherits close alignment with uh, upstream Kubernetes. So, and to meet the security goals, uh, RKE provides uh, default, uh, defaults and configuration options that allow clusters to be uh, uh, to pass the CIS benchmark uh, version 1.5 or 1.6 with uh, minimal operator in intervention. And uh, RKE2 also enables uh, FIPS 140-2 compliance. So as you have seen, uh, uh, SUSE offers uh, open, comprehens open, comprehensive, secure, and interoperable solutions uh, designed for any Kubernetes environment uh, through uh, the full lifecycle container security capabilities of New Vector, the multi-cluster management capabilities of Rancher, and a secure Kubernetes distribution in the form of uh, RK2. And just to reiterate, all three are completely open source and uh, if you want uh, supported deployment, uh, SUSE offers subscription support for both New Vector as well as Rancher. And then RKE2 support gets covered under the Rancher subscription uh, itself. And then before I leave, uh, I would like to invite you all to join the uh, SUSE and Rancher community. Um, uh, it's a place where you can develop your knowledge, you can uh, uh, develop your hands-on skills. Uh, you can network with uh, uh, others in the community. Every month, um, you can explore a new theme that's supported uh, by a wide variety of content, including uh, guest speakers, training, uh, uh, training classes, uh, office hours, uh, and more. Uh, and you can join, you can invite your peers, you can invite your partners, you can invite your uh, prospects. Uh, it's, it's open for everyone. Uh, the URL is uh, community.susa.com. And uh, also remember to join the, uh, the Slack network uh, that Rancher runs. Uh, this is a community network that Rancher runs. Uh, you can simply go to slack.rancher.io and, and join uh, the network to get the latest information on both uh, Rancher and, uh, and New Vector. And if you want to participate in New Vector or if you want to try out New Vector, um, I would recommend you to visit the documentation site, uh, open-docs.newvector.com, and you will find complete instructions on deploying New Vector and uh, how you can deploy it on various different Kubernetes distributions. Uh, and all the um, New Vector images as well as Rancher images are hosted on Docker Hub. So. Uh, and, and one thing that I should not uh, forget to mention is that uh, there is no uh, feature difference between the 
free version and the paid subscription version, right? It's just a difference in the uh, the support services that you get. Otherwise, the software remains the same, right? And with that, I would like to uh, conclude my session.